Well, hello there. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to School of the Spirit. Now, this is a platform where we discuss matters of the Spirit. If you are interested in spiritual growth, you want to know God in a deeper way, this is a platform for you where we go from basic to deeper truths as far as the things of the Spirit are concerned. You know, the Bible says that a natural man, in 1 Corinthians 2.14, cannot understand spiritual things. He says, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually designed. There are things of the Spirit, and it would take a spiritual man to understand, to discern, and to acknowledge these things. And this is why the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Now, we started in the last episode talking about the spirit of revelation. And I gave you a little preview on the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in that capacity as the one who reveals. I told us that to reveal means to disclose, to unveil, or to let loose a secret. And we're going to be discussing further on that in this episode. So first of all, make sure that you have liked this video and you share with as many as you can. And if you are new on this channel, do well to subscribe. Let's get on with the episode today. I want to read where we read last week and then I'll read another scripture, another portion of the Bible to further buttress what we want to talk about today. First off, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It seems like we will keep coming over and over again to this portion of scripture because this is where, in bold terms, the Spirit of God is referred to as a revealer. In verse 10, he says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So the Bible tells us here, that for the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the things of God, He has to search it out. And this is a very interesting um, activity that if you will allow me, I will explain in this episode. Uh, it seems we will have a lot to talk about in dealing with the spirit of revelation. How does the Holy Spirit search into the matters of God, the deep things to, of God? In Proverbs chapter 20, in verse 27, the Bible says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Now, recall from where we read in verse 11 that the only way a man can know all about himself is through his spirit. So your spirit helps you to know who you are, helps you to discover the depths of your being. And now the Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27, where we read that the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. And for a lamp to become a vessel of light, it has to be lit and then it is the infusion of the Holy Spirit and his abilities in the spirit of a man that makes that man a such light through which God can search to discern, to discover, to reveal the innermost parts, the depths, the core aspects of that being. And the same way the Holy Spirit in oneness with our spirits, can search into the belly of God 
and discover the hidden treasures of spiritual knowledge, of spiritual revelations, and reveal them to us. I think it's in Colossians where the Bible speaks of the hidden treasures of knowledge of Christ. So when the Spirit of God comes upon a man at salvation, and as that man learns to exercise his spirit, either in the place of prayer or meditation, the Holy Spirit gives that man supernatural abilities, enhances his spirit and his mind to begin to discover deep truths, realities that are hidden in the spirit realm that reveals God in a certain way to that man. Now, I have a teaching that I just concluded recently that I would really urge you to listen to, Becoming a Spiritual Heavyweight. It's two episodes in one. And I talked about exercising your spirits and talked about the place of prayer and meditation and how this can help your spirit to journey into deeper places in God accumulate acquire and accumulate revelations that will make you grow in your knowledge of God so the spirit searches out these things and then brings it to our awareness brings it to our consciousness the second scripture I'd like to read is in John John's gospel chapter 16 Jesus getting close to the end of his stay on earth before he went to the cross took time to teach the disciples and in three chapters he mentioned the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit chapter 14, 15 and 16 in chapter 16 from verse 12 to 15 still talking about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit these are the words of Jesus I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, Therefore, I said that he will, make, he will take of mine and declare it to you. So the Bible speaks of him as the one who guides into truth. That best explains the activity of revealing or the concept of revelation. Guiding someone into a truth that has been disclosed to the awareness of that individual. He guides us into all truth. And whatever he reveals to us is embodied in the person of Christ. That being said, there are a couple of ways by which the spirit of revelation manifests his activity or his office in our lives. He brings to us revelations through the following ways. Number one, through visions and dreams. Visions and dreams are pictorial or graphic uh, concepts that reveal to a man the plan and purpose of God for that man or that reveals to the man realities that exist in the realm of the spirit, especially as it affects that individual. And it is common for men to have visions and dreams because it is, it takes advantage of your spiritual sense of sight and your spiritual sense of hearing to interact with realities that exist in another realm. I'll give you an example from scripture. Peter, in Acts chapter 10, went on the rooftop of the house to pray when he was in Joppa. 
He was hungry, but while he waited for the food to be ready, he went up to pray. He thought it was necessary to just pass time with prayer. And while he prayed, the Bible said he saw a vision. So, this was a graphic display of what God wanted him to do in opening the gospel to the Gentile church or to the Gentile nations. And you know, after that whole scenario came the house of Cornelius and how God visited the Gentiles. He saw this not asleep, but while in prayer. So visions will reveal God's plan to you or reveal God's opinion about you to you. So also with dreams. Now in a different episode, we'll talk more about visions and dreams, explaining their characteristics and differentiating between them. So visions are dreams, number one, are the first ways by which the spirit of revelation guides us into revealed things. Number two, by a knowing, what I call a spiritual knowing. I'm not talking about a knowledge that is learned. I'm talking about a knowledge that just spontaneously comes up from within you. You know, the Bible says, what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him. So it is within the capacity of your spirit to know things that you are not taught mentally. Things that you did not learn through mental rigor or exercise. And so the Holy Spirit takes advantage of that capacity to know, which is hidden in your heart, in your spirit, to bring you into knowings. All of a sudden you know this is what I should do or this is going to be the outcome of this or this will happen on this day. In John chapter 13, the Bible gave us an example of such knowings about Jesus. The Bible says after supper was ended and the devil had entered the heart of Judas, Jesus, knowing that he came from God and knowing that he was returning back to God, he stood up laid aside his garment, gathered himself with a toil, and began to wash the feet of the disciples. So what he was doing was based on a knowing he had in the spirit. There are many times Jesus would have discussions with the Pharisees. They would come to tempt him with questions, not because they sought answers, but they were looking for him to say something that they would trap him with. But the Bible says, and Jesus, knowing their thoughts, It's a knowing that comes from within. It's called a knowing of revelation. That's another infrastructure by which the spirit of revelation reveals or discloses realities to us. Another aspect can be through prophecies. Prophecies are actually revealed messages from God to another individual. There are times when you may not be able to perceive the mind of God over issues. And it is okay to seek one through whom God has revealed his mind to. Prophecies are also another way for God to reveal his mind. Here's how he puts it in Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Speaking about the ministry of the prophetic in the place of revelation. In verse 9, he says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before they begin to manifest, I will tell you. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, Surely the Lord does nothing except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. So the spirit of revelation can walk through the infrastructure of the prophetic or prophecies. He can disclose his mind or the mind of God over issues or disclose a secret that needs to be unveiled. There are many times people have come to me, respectfully speaking, for counseling. And the spirit of God just reveals to me the situation at hand. 
sometimes that revelation when i release it to them helps them to clarify certain things that are true or false and it has saved many people so these are three primary ways and the fourth way can be through the word of god either the teaching the studying the reading or the meditation of the word of god in spirit of revelation can cause you to access truths deeper understandings from the scripture as touching the ways of god as touching the plans and the purposes of god so these are four primary ways by which the spirit of revelation acts we're going to discuss more on these ways in the next episode and then go further to teach you how to tune your spiritual senses to activate the ministry of the spirit of revelation in your life but i tell you the truth just like the bible declares in deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 29 i believe it says for the secret things belong to god 29 29 or 30 29 it says the secret things belong to god or and the things that are revealed are for us and for our children and children's children that we may know to do the law of god once something is revealed to you from god it becomes your own it becomes your responsibility to steward that revelation to guard it and to walk in partnership with the holy spirit towards its manifestation and because our lives come from god in christ jesus it means that most of the things that we will do to live to exist to thrive and to grow as believers will have to stem from the ministry of the holy spirit as the spirit of revelation it means that everything that god will have you do with your new life in christ jesus will flow from the stream of revelation and so revelation becomes a daily quest, a daily desire, a healthy desire in the life of every believer. In fact, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, praying a prayer for the church, that he will grant that you are filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The knowledge of God cannot just be taught, it has to be revealed. Even when taught, it takes the spirit of revelation to help you decipher the deeper meanings of what it is explained to you. Otherwise, you can read the scriptures and not be able to comprehend what it says. And I pray that the spirit of revelation will have access into your life and bring you into the depths of God that is needed for your growth, for your stature, and for your increasing more and more in the things of God. In Jesus' name. I'll see you in the next episode. And I hope you watch this again and again so it can bless you. Shalom and bye for now.